I just bought the cheapest canister filter you could buy on Amazon. You guys might know it as the Sunsun 304B, but in Canada they market it as the Marine Color 304B. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the canister filter and also setting it up. The filter comes with a bunch of filter media, but we're gonna be modifying this. A lot of people use it as is, which is great if you have a small amount of fish or fish that don't produce a lot of waste, but for my tilapias, they produce a crazy amount of waste and as is, it just wouldn't work. So let's go unbox this now. Let's open the box and see what we have inside. I was actually surprised to see that on the box it says Sun Sun, even though Amazon Canada has it marketed as marine color. Here is the actual canister filter. In the white box, we're given all the things required to hook up the canister filter. We have the green tubes that will be connected to the input and the output of the filter, an instruction manual, the input and output attachment, the inlet bend pipe with its attachment and the filter casing. This will be used to bring the water from your tank to the canister filter. And the last bag contains the spray bar and all its attachments, which will be used to bring the filtered water back inside your tank. Now let's open up the canister filter to see what's inside. There are four latches that you need to pull up to remove the top cover. Once you open it, you will see the UV light bulb sticking out. Then you have the top tray lid cover. The first tray, you got some biological filter media and white cotton padding. The second tray, you got plastic bio balls and white cotton padding. The third tray, you have chemical media, which I won't be using, and more cotton padding. And on the last tray, you have even more white cotton padding. And here's the bottom of the filter. There's nothing, it's empty. Here are all the things I'll be using in the canister filter as media. We have two boxes of ceramic rings, formed for mechanical filtration, cold batting, which will be used as filter flaws, and lava rocks that will be used as biological filter media. This is how I plan to set up my filter media. We have four trays and a tray lid on top. At the bottom of the last tray, I will add ceramic rings. What this will do is break the solid waste before it hits my mechanical filtration and prevent the foam from clogging. Going from bottom to top, on the last tray, I'll be putting the mechanical filter foam and adding the white cotton padding we got with the canister filter. On tray number three, I'll be adding lava rocks as biological filter media. Tray number two will also have lava rocks. And lastly, tray number one will be a mixture of bioballs and ceramic rings and I will put cotton padding on top of it. Before we can put everything in the canister filter, we need to wash all the filter media thoroughly. Here we have two buckets filled with lava rocks. I have done multiple rinses after taking them out of the bag and even though it might look like the water was clear, at the bottom there was always this black residue. So to get rid of this residue, I left the rocks sitting in tap water for 72 hours with multiple rinses every 24 hours but the residue did not completely go away. What I just finished doing to hopefully solve the issue, I took a toothbrush and individually scrubbed each one of the rocks and the count is in the hundreds so it did take me a few hours. Now they are sitting in treated water. I use Seacam Prime, the same thing I use in the fish tank. I will let it sit in the treated water for 48 hours and then air dry it before putting it in my canister filter. I also made sure to wash both the ceramic rings and bio balls in treated water. We can finally start putting things in the filter.
Now let's set up the attachments. Attach the filter casing to the inlet vent pipe. Add the suction cup attachments on the side of the inlet vent pipe. Now for the spray bar. Here are the two locking mechanisms. I will show you guys how to use them later in the video. For the spray bar, there are multiple pieces that allows you to elongate the bar. It's up to you how long or short you want it to be. Just make sure the last spray bar piece is the one that is closed at the end. Let's go in the fish room and set it up now. We will first fill up the canister filter with tank water. I filled it up until I saw water come up to my first tray. For the input and output attachment, it's fairly simple. Place it on top of the canister filter and use the plastic clip to lock it in. Attaching the green pipes was honestly the hardest part. You really need to use your strength here and push it in as much as you can. Once it's fully in, twist the plastic cup to lock the tube. Don't make it too tight and at the same time you don't want to make it too loose either. Here is the plastic locking mechanism I spoke to you guys about before. Keep one on each tube. Once you have the inlet and outlet pipes attached with the green tube, you will use them to lock it together. You just need to squeeze it really hard until it can't go in no more. Now let's do the same thing for the other green tube. Pay attention to which side is the in and the out on the canister filter. Don't mix them up. The inlet pipe was a bit too long for my tank so I had to cut it off a bit for it to fit in. I'm going to place the canister filter in a tote. That way if there is any leaks it won't flood my floor. I'm connecting a smart plug to it so I can shut off the filter at any time if that was to happen. In an upcoming video I will build something that will detect the leaks in the tote. Stay tuned for that video. When it comes to the green tubes, you have to make sure it isn't too long. Cut it to the length that is shortest from the filter to your tank. You want the pump to be able to move more water at a shorter distance and at the same time this puts less pressure on the pump. Now tighten the attachments properly on the side of your tank. And this is the close up of the passing locking mechanism and how it should be attached. Before you plug in the canister filter, you need to prime it. Pressing the big blue button repeatedly will start bringing in water in the tubes and you want to do this until both tubes have a proper flow of water. And now, the finale. Water comes in from this side, goes all the way down the green tube, into the canister filter, out the green tube, and back into the tank. I'll be using the canister filter for a couple of weeks before I post this video. So it's been about three weeks I had the canister filter running on my tank. My tank has never been cleaner. It's been going absolutely great. I made a few slight changes. The first is I removed the spray bar. It kept falling off and the sound was very loud. Now the water falls in the tank in one place. Secondly, I added a divider next to the inlet pipe. My fish kept finding and going into it and it actually came off the suction cup a few times. The one thing I did notice that looked a bit off was inside the green tube. It looks a bit dirty. I'm not sure if people usually clean it after a while or just replace it, but that's something we'll worry about later. Other than that, honestly, it's been going great. Definitely worth the money. On my next video, I'll be improving my tank filtration system even more. I will unlock the secrets of a better hang on back filter. So stay tuned for that video. I also have a new tank coming in very soon and more content related to fish keeping and fishing. If you want to see what my fish look like when I first got them, watch this video here. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.